Uh, ladies, thank you for joining me. Uh, we have Kelly O'Dwyer and we have Amanda Rishworth. And uh, I want you to tell me about the parliamentary friendship group that you've formed and I gather you've got an event in the house tonight. So, Kelly? Yes. Um, well, Amanda and I decided it would be a really great idea to support women in math, science and engineering by forming a parliamentary friendship group. We realised that there was a need to support women, to connect women, to promote and value the achievements of women in those fields which have predominantly been considered to be male-dominated male professions. And we've got the, the wonderful Elizabeth Blackburn, who is a Nobel laureate, who is actually launching our function tonight, which is a great thrill for both of us. Um, and we're also very keen as well to, to look at how we can break down some of the barriers that, that might exist for women in those professions. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's something that both Amanda and I are very committed to. And Amanda, you're a psychologist by training, is that right? Yeah. So um, is this why you're a science person? Well look actually where my interest got involved I did see through psychology obviously some of the similar things you see in science professions and that is there's a lot of women go in and in undergraduate but as their career progresses in the academic area the number of women actually drop off and it's it's really sad to see. However what really I think got my interest in this is um, in the last parliament one of the House of Reps committees actually did an inquiry into research capacity in Australia and there it did identify some of the inflexibilities that we do have in our research system in Australia that does prevent women from actually uh, participating to their full potential. In addition, there's obviously some cultural issues um, around um, um, breaking through that barrier for women. So I actually, um, when Kelly uh, spoke to me about it, I actually thought it was a great initiative because we're doing two things here. One, we're really trying to promote women in maths, science and engineering, but celebrating women as well that have made great achievements and there are a number of them that provide great role models for women looking to take this career opportunity. Okay and you guys are obviously being far more polite than I would be. <laughs> Essentially we're saying aren't we that blokes don't like chicks in science. Now how do blokes like chicks in politics? <laughs> Well, I'm not sure I would say blokes don't like chicks in science because I actually think but blokes blokes do, but they perhaps don't always understand the need for flexibility. And I think one example today, for instance, I, I gave a, a little speech um, today on behalf of one of my constituents who's a researcher who said that she can apply for a grant. Um, it has to be a full-time grant. She, she can then go part-time after that, but she can't apply part-time. And there seems to be this inflexibility that's in the system at the moment where you can ultimately go part-time but you can't apply for it part-time it doesn't make a lot of sense to me it doesn't make a lot of sense to to either of us and so we think that that that's where we can perhaps play a bit of a role but in terms of blokes and and politics um look it's you know it, it does have a bit of a blokey image i think politics because it's pretty combative um although i think most women in this parliament can probably give as good hold as they their get they hold, hold their, their own, own. <laughs> <laughs> hold their own absolutely absolutely look i think um kelly's right i think it is very adversarial um, system and I think that does I think when some women see that it might may pop put them off. I've always found though you use your own abilities and you bring that to the job. For example I'm a very good nagger and I found that nagging um, you know you get things done if you're constantly following it up and so I think you bring your own um, abilities to the job. Um, but I do think every now and again um, when you look at some of the attention on women for example what they wear, I do think sometimes women get a bit of Or harder. their bum size. Yeah, they do get a little bit more of a harder time than men. I've seen some sloppy dresses. I won't name anyone in particular. <laughs> name them. <laughs> won't be able to name them. But if they got the attention, I think, that some of the women got, um, I think they'd be thinking twice before uh, maybe yelling something across the chamber. <laughs> Yes. I couldn't agree more, Amanda. I think that's exactly – that's well put. It's well put. And, and haircuts. I think, yes. you know, haircuts is another particular favourite. Mm -hmm. I get quite a lot of commentary yeah. on my hair, as yeah. I'm sure, you know, yeah. many other members of this place do as well. Yeah. Although I'm not so sure that the male members get quite as much of a commentary on the hair. No, you know, nice mullet. Discuss. <laughs> Exactly right. So, so it would be nice to think that everybody is very interested in the content of what you have to say, but but sometimes people do seem to get a little distracted. But but we're never distracted by it. No. Um, so I think I that's the critical. I delete those emails. Uh, I just delete them. Uh, so if you're thinking about sending me an email commenting on my hair, curly hair is hard to look after. So just putting it out. There. I think there might be products for it, but yeah, anyway, and straight actually. So, but on a more serious note, because of course politics is serious. No joke allowed and no friendships across party lines allowed. 
uh, you know, obviously. Uh, what is it like to be a young liberal woman on the back bench embarking on a parliamentary career, all of it before you? Is there much of a culture of mentoring in your organisation? Do you feel supported if yeah. you wanted to, you know, go ahead, be a minister, you know, God forbid, Kelly, be the Prime Minister, you know, whatever. Do you feel well supported? Well, well, I do feel very well supported. I mean, we're very lucky that we've got a, a, a real cross-section of experience within our party room. And I think that we're able to, particularly as backbenchers, draw on all of that experience. There are people who've been here for quite some time, people who've had some amazing careers outside of politics before they've come in. And I certainly know that I take advantage of that opportunity, you know, to pick people's brains on a whole range of ideas and issues and, and also just to ask for advice sometimes on how you would go about achieving a particular objective. I also utilise the, the mentoring, the friendships that I've built outside of politics as well. And I'm not just restricted to politics and political mentors per se, because I think you can have a lot of other amazing mentors who can give you great ideas and, and share their experience in different areas um, that, that is just as applicable to the career that you might have in politics. So, for instance, um, you know, women who you know are, are dealing with you know family and career and balancing that, often you have quite a lot in common with, with, with women of, of a particular age as well and, and being able to talk to other women who've been there and done that I think is really useful. Mm. And Amanda? Yeah, look, I've been really, really lucky that I've had a lot of um, women caucus members um, be very supportive, especially when I got here in my first term. And I always remember Jenny George, I'd never met her before, a rock up to um, Parliament, and she just gave me some really great advice. And even after the last election, she rang me up and chatted to me about, you know, where I'm going to go and what am I, get, what am I going to do. So I've actually been very lucky to have a lot of informal mentors around this place. And women... I think they really do look after um, other women and I've actually had some great advice um, from coalition uh, women as well. So I actually do um, feel there is a collegial um, element to it. Of course, there's always going to be the rough and tumble of politics, but I think beyond that, I think there is a culture of uh, supporting other women around the place. I think on the serious questions, you know, putting the politics to one side, I think I think there is a degree of empathy, you know, when people uh, are going through, you know, particular life experiences, whether it's having children, you know, whether it's something to do with their family members or their children, something like that. I think that you're right to say, Amanda, that, that people do share experience from across the political divide. So we can get beyond the biff. <laughs> We can definitely get beyond the biff. Well, that's kind of reassuring. You might not see it, though, out there <laughs> on the floor. But, look, uh, I'm is... glad we're here with the camera. <laughs> it is actually a bit of a... Uh, something that the public don't always get to see and I often do get asked I mean and you know I do have friends on the other side of politics and people you do catch up with and unfortunately the the public don't always get to see that working together but some of the private members motions I've put up I've one of the areas I've been particularly interested in is the sexualization of girls and that's been an issue that I have received broad support um, from across the party on trying to uh, you know, really look at this issue and, and it's a society issue, it's a cultural issue, it's not something you can change overnight but I've been really supported and um, egged on by a lot of women uh, and men uh, around the place that have really taken up the issue. So there are issues that we can agree on and that we can push forward together. Good to see you. Well, thank you both for joining us. It's been a delight. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs>